Luke 11, 27 to 28. While Jesus was still talking, a woman in the crowd spoke up. The woman who gave birth to you and nursed you is blessed. So habang nagkukwento at nagsasalita ang Panginoon, may isang babaeng sumingit at pasigaw niyang sinabi, Your mother Mary is blessed. Jesus replied, That's true. But the people who are really blessed are the ones who hear and obey God's message. Mas blessed pa kesa kay Mother Mary. Lord, salamat dahil kayo ay nagbibigay ng liwanag sa amin. At ngayon, yan ang hinihiling namin, Panginoon, kaliwanagan sa isip, sa puso, ng maging gabay sa aming pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay. Kayo pong mangusap, mangaral, hinihiling namin ang lahat ng ito, ma, sa ngalan ng iyong anak na si Jesus. Luke 11, 14-23 Isang masalimot na kwento na dapat subaybayan at bantayan para huwag mawala ang kahulugan. Jesus forced a demon out of a man who could not talk. And after the demon had gone out, the man started speaking and the crowds were amazed. So merong physical level na nangyayari dito. Yung physically pinaalis ang masamang espiritu doon sa tao. At syempre, merong spiritual level na kahulugan. Meron ding inalis doon sa tao na higit pa sa nakikita ng madla na very physical and very visual. Verse 16. Others wanted to put Jesus to the test. So they asked Him to show them a sign from God. Matikas talaga ang ulo ng mga taong ito kasi kakapalayas pa lang ni Jesus sa masamang espiritu, humihingi pa sila ng mga patunay at senyales mula sa Diyos para sila makinig. Parang hindi pa sapat na ang isang masamang espiritu na umaalipin doon sa taong ni hindi makapagsalita at pipi na nga ay pinalayas ni Jesus at nakapagsalita yung tao. As if forcing out a demon was not sign enough. And so Jesus answers, verse 20, If I use God's power to force out demons, it proves that God's kingdom has already come to you. Kung ginagamit ko ang kapangyarihan ng langit, ng Diyos, para magpalayas ng masasamang espiritu ang umaalipin sa inyo, nagpapahirap sa inyong buhay, nagpapabigat ng inyong mga pasanin, isa lang ang kahulugan noon, dumating na ang paghahari ng Diyos. Dumating na ang kaharian ng Diyos sa inyo. Yung mga iba ko bakit antay pa ng antay hanggang ngayon, sinabi na ni Jesus, nakita nyo na, nagpalayas ako ng demonyo, isa yung senyales, na dumating na. Thy kingdom come. The kingdom has come. God's power is used by Jesus to force out demons. So God's power has come down to earth to release people from bondage. And that is one of, of the many meanings of the kingdom of God. To set people free from bondage, from hardship, from difficulty, and in this case, from being mute, unable to talk. The big story is that the kingdom of God has come. So Jesus illustrates this story with yet another story. When a strong man arms himself, and read the strong man as the bad spirit that was Deliver, or that was shown the door, that was asked to go and forced to leave. When a strong man arms himself and guards the home, everything he owns is safe. But if a stronger man, and read the stronger man as Jesus, when the stronger man comes and defeats him, the strong man, said may strong at may stronger, he will carry off the weapons in which the strong man trusted. Then he will divide with others what he has taken. So these are devices of the story, garnishings to make it appealing to the hearers, but you are not supposed to get doctrine from every detail of an illustration. The big deal is, there's a strong man, the devil, possessing this human being, and the stronger man, Jesus, drives out this evil spirit to set the man free. And the message is very clear. When the house owner is weak, 
like this just strong man against the stronger man a stronger man will displace him and snatch his possession jesus is that stronger man who will snatch away from the claws of evil spirits the human beings that they oppress evil is the strong man and for our reading suggested serving because that is the context of the story read the evil man as the law the tradition the old ways of life of israel that held them captive that made them unable to talk that imprisoned them in so many terms and jesus is the stronger man the new law of god of love of power that sets people free from the stranglehold of just the strong man jesus the stronger man came to dispossess the strong man the law the kingdom of god has come to replace the kingdom of the law the kingdom of cruel and cold and very punishing laws of over the people so love has come love is the stronger man over the law which was just a strong man for the longest time luke 11 27 to 28 when an evil spirit leaves a person and read that now as the law as the tradition as the old thinking because that is the main thesis of the teachings of jesus the old and the new all the time the old and the new so when an evil spirit leaves a person and read that as the law the tradition the old thinking it travels through the desert looking for a place to rest but when it doesn't find a place it says i will go back to the home i left pagkapalayas daw sa espiritong yan ay nagpapalaboy-laboy at mamimiss niya yung dati niyang tinirhan sabi niya babalikan ko na lang ang dati kong tahanan and when it gets there and finds the place clean and fixed up and read it as when the old traditions when the traditions of the law oppressive religious systems are driven out by a new spiritual experience call it the born again experience call it new religiosity so there is a cleaning up and a fixing up there is a readiness for a new thing for a new way of life for a new value system liken that to the house that was cleaned up because the occupant the old style was driven out so the old spirit it goes off and finds seven other evil spirits even worse than itself they all come and make their home there and that person ends up in worse shape than before read it that when you become born again when you commit to a new religiosity and spirituality you're actually ready for change you are cleaned up and fixed up but the old ways the old system would always want to go back and when they do go back they find you empty just fixed up ready for their vengeance ready for the return so the bad spirit comes back with seven more who are worse and the suffering will become even greater so if you have a spiritual and a religious experience but just remain empty of the true occupant that you must have meaning jesus in jesus ness the love of god through jesus the old laws will be back you will be haunted by the old traditions the old laws the old beliefs that you had before plus there will be seven others because now that you have gotten into another religious style and system you will have to accept many more denominational rules and regulations you will be involved in the many religious and denominational wars that you were not even aware of before your born again experience and you will have to contend with so many church bullies conservative people in the church who will watch you police you and judge you at the slightest excuse so the old law comes back with seven other evils and you will even become more miserable this is a symbolism the story has very deep readings available the lesson is that when a person goes through a spiritual experience the old spirit meaning the old thoughts 
the old activities and the old ways, the old personality could be displaced, reoriented, disoriented. So, pagka nagkaroon ka ng born again experience, na involved ka sa isang Bible study, na bigla ka umatin ng ibang church, liban sa dati mong nakaugalian, may reorientation ka. In fact, may disorientation. That's why Jesus says the place is fixed up. It is rearranged. The strong man is expelled. The old ways are expelled. Yung mga sinasabi natin, iwan mo na yan dahil pumunta ka na sa Panginoon. Marami na expel. But old habits die hard. So mabait ka lang the first week or the first month. Meron ka lang peace in the Lord the first month or after the retreat or right after the Bible study. Pero unti-unting nagbabalikan lahat with a vengeance. Sasabihin sa iyo ng mga nagdadala sa iso Bible study, alam mo, pagka tinanggap po si Jesus, lalaya ka, magkakaroon ka ng freedom. You will be free from all the law, blah, 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 blah. At pagka nag-pray ka, tinanggap po si Jesus, pagdilat mo sa niya, gotcha. Ngayon, eto na mga bago nating rule sister. Ibutonis mo yung buong damit mo hanggang taas. Dapat lagi ka naka-long sleeve. Pahabain mo yung buhok mo. Ha? At yung mga damit mo, bantay-bantayan mo. Kailangan may ganito at may ganong ministry kahit naghihingalo ang nanay mo huwag kang absent sa Sunday school, ha? Kasi unahin natin ang Diyos. Blam, 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 blam. Ang daming dumating. May pitong kasama pagbalik. So, teka, 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 teka. Akala ko ba nung naborn again ako, magkakaroon ako ng peace. Ba't di nyo ako tinatanta ng bantayan? Akala ko ba magkakaroon ng love? Bakit laging awayan? Laging selosan? Laging magsusumbatan dito? Bakit laging judgment? Bakit ang tagal-tagal ko naglingkod? Pagkatapos, minsan ako nadapa, pagpepiestahan nyo ako, tapos ititiwalag nyo ako. Kasi pagbalis nga ng Espiritu, pagbalik maraming kasama. Kaya dapat bantayan. The old spirit will seek and find its way back. And that is a, what we call backslide. Ang backsliding is hindi lang pagbalik sa mga bisyo. Ang backsliding is pagbalik sa pagiging Pharisee. Sa pagiging obsessed with the law sa pambabato sa kapwa, sa panguhusga, backsliding na mas grabe yun. So, if the house had only been cleaned and fixed up, yun lang ang ginawa, but had not been filled with the, with the new occupant, meaning Jesus, meaning grace, meaning love, it would only be reoccupied by the old spirit with a vengeance because there will be seven other worse spirits. Dati, simpleng tao ka lang. Ngayon, mai-involve ka sa sobrang denominationalism kasi sinalihan mong church. Kagiyaran niya lahat ang mga ibang born again churches eh. Kaawan niya lahat ang mga conservative, ang hindi conservative, at ang mga full gospel at half gospel at one-fourth gospel. Gera-gera yan. Dati wala kang ganun, meron na ngayon. Tapos, kasama pa ang mga modern day Pharisees. Akala mo na matay na yung mga Pharisees sa Israel, ang dami pala sa church. Pagkatapos, maaalipin ka na kutak-kutak ng mga religious fads. Ang dami mga pauso ng mga galing sa kung saan bansa. Itong uso, ito isusuot natin ngayon. Mga trinket religiosity. Itong atin ngayong suot, itong atin ngayong belo, itong atin ngayong hikaw. Yung lahat na kinokopya ang mga fads all over the world. Dumami ang amo. Mas maraming chance magkamali. Back to the narrative. So nagkukwento si Jesus ng ganun napakahalaga Biglang may nag-interrupt na babaeng pumapapel. Luke 11, 27 to 28. While Jesus was still speaking, a woman in the crowd spoke up. The woman who gave birth to you and nursed you is blessed. Yung nagluwal sa'yo at nagpasuso sa'yo at nagbigay sa'yo ng gatas para ka lumaki, blessed. So the woman was saying, your mother Mary is blessed for giving birth to you and for nursing you. And true, that's true. Let's take a look at Mary being blessed. Walang nang kukontest nun. All generations will call her blessed. We respect Mary and we call her blessed. Natural. Luke 1, 41-48 When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women. And Mary said, From now on, all generations will call me blessed. And we agree, Mary is blessed. Blessed talaga. But in spite of the big blessedness, 
in spite of what the woman blurted out, heard by all, verse 28, Jesus replied, that's true. Yes, blessed is the woman who gave me birth and who nursed me. But the people who are really blessed, yung blessed talaga, are the ones who hear and obey God's message. Hindi minalit ni Jesus ang blessedness ni Mother Mary. Pero ipinakita lang niyang merong greater blessedness than that. In fact, a more correct and translation is in the footnotes of the Bible versions that Jesus said this, that's not true. The people who are blessed are the ones who hear the message. Yun ang more technical translation. That's why it's in the footnotes. Bakit dumating yung blessedness na to and that's not true, etc., etc. sa kwento? Luke 8, 19 to 21. Now Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. He replied, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. It's very strange. Hindi makapasok si Mary at ang kanyang mga anak na lalaki papunta kay Jesus. May nagsabi sa loob na dyan ng nanay mo at mga kapatid. Sabi, itong mga nakikinig sa akin na ito, itong nakikinig sa salita ng Ama sa Langit, sila ang aking pamilya. Yung mga sumusunod sa salita ng Diyos. Matthew 12, 47 to 48. Someone told Jesus, Your mother and brothers are standing outside and want to talk to you. Jesus answered, Who is my mother? And who are my brothers? So Matthew is more emphatic. Whoever hears and obeys God's words are my mother and brother and sister. Sabi ni Jesus. May background kasi yan eh. Bakit gano'n ang takbo ng kwento? Kasi itong mag dumating para sunduin si Jesus at pigilin sa mga pinaggagawa niya. Mark 3.21 When Jesus' family heard what he was doing, they thought he was crazy and went to get him under control. Yun ang pakay ng pagpunta nila. Pauuwiin nila at pipilitin nilang huwag ituloy ang ginagawa niya. Dahil naiisip nilang nawawala ng bait si Jesus. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, sinong nanay ko? Sinong mga kapatid ko? Ito, ito mga nakikinig. Sa salita ng mga at sumusunod, yan ang tunay kong pamilya. At this point, Jesus' family, at least for that point, was not hearing nor obeying God. That's why there was a sharp rebuke. But of course, that changed later. Even James, the brother, who was a very fierce Judaizer, became a believer but remained a Judaizer anyway. So according to Jesus, and this is the heart of the matter of the conversation, more than being blood relatives with him, or with Abraham, or with the Jews, more than being a Jew, more than being a biological descendant of Abraham, more than being a biological family of Jesus, the truly, really blessed are, ang mas blessed ay those who hear and obey God's message. Don't be disgraced. That's the point of the story. Jesus did not mean to be impolite to his family, but he was saying, true blessedness is hearing God's word and obeying it. It's not being related to me. So if being related to Jesus by blood is not the point, di lalo namang hindi yung being an Israelite or a Jew or a son of Abraham. The point is, if you hear and obey God's message, you are truly blessed. Mas blessed ka talaga kesa sa mga tinatawag na blessed. Remember that the context is a spirit is being driven out of a person and its eventual return with an even much more potent strength. Huwag natin kakalimutan yung true story. Lahat kasi nangyari lang related, suporta sa story. But the true story is, pagka ang tao ay lumalapit sa Diyos, ang tao ay hinihipo ni Jesus, may umaalis, may pinapalayas. Pero yung pinalayas na yun, gusto magbalik. At pag pinayagan mo magbalik, mas malala ka pa kaysa dati. This return of the evil spirit is accommodated 
by the former host's emptiness. Pagka pinalayas mo ang iyong espiritong masama, pag pinalayas mo ang mga old traditions, pag pinalayas mo yung laws that oppress you, pag pinalayas mo yung mga yun, tapos hindi mo pinalitan ng Jesus, ng Jesusness, pag binalikan ka, wala ka pa laman, pwede kang talagang ma-oppress ulit. The return of the evil spirit is accommodated by the former host's lack of good occupant, lack of new good strength. The heart of the matter, when contextualized in the overall mission of Jesus. And what is the overall mission of Jesus? Kingdom of God, reign of God, freedom from the law, relief from pain and suffering, which leads to rest, peace. Yan ang mission ni Jesus. When contextualized in the overall mission of Jesus, true blessedness is being freed from the Strong, freed by the stronger man. Ang true blessedness, mapalaya ka ni Jesus. Yung maranasan mo yung God's liberating and empowering message, Jesus, God's messenger and message, maging totoo sa buhay mo, yan ang true context of the overall mission of Jesus. To set you free, to give you the kingdom, and to liberate you from the strong man. Yung strong man, yung dating espiritong nakatira doon sa tao, stronger man si Jesus, pinalayas niya, pero dapat hindi kabalikan ng strong man. That strong man, represented by what is called an evil spirit in the story, is a cruel occupant master. And in the case of the people of Israel and the people of God that Jesus was really teaching, it's an oppressive belief system that wears people out. Masalimot yung kwento, kaya suklayin natin mabuti. The evil spirit sa kwento represents an old oppressive belief system that was imprisoning and putting in chains the victim, the man. Jesus is the stronger man that drives the evil spirit away. Meaning Jesus, the love of God, the new age of grace and kindness and love is the stronger man than the age of law and the age of anger, and the age of punishing each other, he's the stronger man. Jesus is the stronger man. The old system of belief that made people suffer, that made them mute, that oppressed them, was the strong man, the evil spirit. Do not equate the old religion of Israel as evil. It's a representation in the story. These are symbolisms. Hindi naman nagkukwento lang si Jesus para maglibang at magbigay ng kwento. Laging may aral yon At ang general aral ng mga lesson niya is talagang, you must be free from the old law. I'm giving you a new law which will set you free, which will give you rest. So, this, old, this man was held by the strong man, the spirit of the old system. Jesus is the stronger man that sets the man free. Colossians 2.9 God lives fully in Christ. Needless to say, not in the law, in Christ. Because if God lives fully in the law, hindi na ipapadala si Christ. Pinadala si Christ because it is in Christ where God, in whom God lives fully. John 1.14, the Word, and this is Jesusness, the Word became a human being and lived here with us. Jesusness became the man, Jesus. We saw His true glory, the glory of the only Son, of the Father, the only. Siya lang ang may karapatan. From Him, all the kindness and all the truth of God have come down to us. Which means, not from the law, not from the temple, from Jesus. In Jesus, all the goodness and kindness of God is revealed. Meaning, it was hidden before. The old system, the old legal system, the law, hid the true kindness of God because what it always presented was an angry God, a vindictive God na lagi nilang nagagalit, lagi nilang nagpaparusa. So, ipinadala si Jesus para ipakita ng buo ang totoong imahe ng Diyos. Mapagmahal, maibigin, mapagtanggap. So, the spirit had to be driven out of the man and in the case of the context of the Jesus teachings, it is the old law the old religious way that oppresses people that have to be driven out.
Everything that could and should be known about the Father is revealed through the Son, not through the priests and the Pharisees. Matthew 11, 28, 27. My Father has given me everything. The only one who truly knows the Father is the Son. So not even the earlier or later prophets, it's only Jesus, it's only the Son who truly knows the Father. But the Son wants to tell others about the Father, sa pagpapaduli ni Jesus, so that they can know Him too. Meaning, they did not know the Father through the law. Now through love and through Jesus, people will know the Father. Jesus is and should be the measure of all things. Kaya dapat lahat ng ating paniniwala, lahat ng ating kostumbre, lahat ng ating mga policies, lahat ng ating mga beliefs, lahat ng ating mga patakaran, test and screen all spiritual teachings of all teachers, walang exemption, all teachers, through the Jesus filter. Lahat. Lahat ng katuroan ng mga naunang nagturo kay Jesus at sumunod kay Jesus, ihulog sa salaan ni Jesus sa kanyang filter, at yung lalampas doon is only what is loving. In other words, lahat ng mga katuroan na hindi na loving, cruel, unkind, judgmental, condemning, lahat yan hindi lalampas. At anong gagawin? Itaktak na siya sa file, sa library, sa history, kasi pinalitan na ni Jesus ang lahat ng yan. Sabi niya, I'm giving you a new command. Love one another. At nung si Jesus ay nag-transfigure na ibang anyo, lumabas sa tabi niya si Moses at si Elijah, representing the law and the prophets. At ang tinig ng Ama sa Langit ay nagsabi, ito, si Jesus ang aking anak, sa kanya kayo makinig. Listen to him. So para na niyang sinabi, huwag niyo kayo Moses, huwag niyo sa mga prophet na niyang kayo lang makinig, kay Jesus kayo makinig. Ang papakinggan niyo lang sa sinasabi ni Moses, sa sinasabi ng mga prophet, at sinasabi ng kung sino-sino dyan, ay eh yung lalampas sa Jesus filter. Sang ayon sa inireveal ko sa kanya dahil siya lang nakakakilala sa akin at sang ayon sa inireveal niya sa inyo. So merong Jesus filter kailangan sa lain kasi hindi mo pwedeng paghalu-haluin in the same heart, in the same mind lahat ng mga cruel laws of old times at lahat ng mga loving laws ni Jesus. Malilito ka at makakagulo-gulo ang iyong policy sa buhay. Case in point, yung babaeng nahuli nila na sumiping sa isang lalaking din niya asawa babatuhin nila hanggang mamatay. Eh kasi yun ang sabi ng law. Pero hindi yun ipinabato ni Jesus. So alam nyo na, hindi lumampas sa salaan ni Jesus yung mga bato. So ilagay sa file, ilagay sa library. Ang ibig sabihin mga kapatid, huwag na kayong nambabato ng mga taong sa tingin nyo ay makasalanan. Ipaubaya nyo sa sa Diyos. Sa pag-ibig ng Diyos, sa pamamagitan ni Jesus. May salaan na. Huwag nyo nang lulunin lahat. Salain muna bago lulunin at bago i-impose sa iba, bago pahirapan ng sarili at pahirapan ang kapwa. What does that pass through the filter should be shelved and may be applied only in context. Halimbawa, yung Sabbath. Sabi niya, oh, on the seventh day you will rest. Hindi ka naman dapat alipin nung kailan ba yung number seven, Sabado. Sa so, palagay niyo ba, pag Sabado dito, Sabado din sa langit. Kung isa nga, Sabado na dito, biyernes pa lang sa Amerika. So, kailan talaga ang Sabado? Pag naging technical ka about Sabado, ang ibig sabihin lang ng context nun, every seven days of work must be broken by a seventh day of rest. So, ang context, ang spirit is, huwag ka namang nagtatrabaho araw-araw, kailan magpahinga ka. Na ang context nun, huwag ka magtrabaho every hour, kailangan may pahinga ka. Kailangan may pahinga ang tao. Mahalaga pa talaga kung kailan mo itatapat yung pahinga. Naging sobrang legalistic kasi ang Israel eh. Kahit nalulunod ka na, walang sasagip sa'yo, sabat. Walang magtatrabaho. Naging unloving na yung application. So apply all the old laws when the context allows you to be loving. And when the context is loving. Yung mga dietary laws, ang dami niya ng Israel. Sabi ni Jesus, hindi mahalaga kung kinakain nyo. Ang mahalaga kung lumalabas sa inyong bibig. Kasi naging amon na rin nila yung kanilang mga diet. Ang dami pa. Sabi ni Paul, ang mga babae dapat mahaba lahat ng buhok. Kaya hanggang ngayon, like, uy, sabi ni Paul, kami mahaba buhok. Compromiser ka, ha? Iksi-iksi ng buhok mo. E palibasa yung mga prostitute sa Corinth, mahaba buhok. Yung mga iba, naging Christian na, ah, este, maiksi ang buhok. 
Tapos naging Christian na sila, patuloy pa rin sila sa prostitution, mahaba pa rin ang buhok nila. Kaya sabi ni Paul, hoy dapat kayo, maghaba kayo ng buhok ha. Ang ibig niya lang sabihin, tumigil kayo sa inyong trade. O kaya, huwag niyo litohin ang mga tao kahit hindi kayo prostitute, ang isin ng buhok niyo na pagkakamalang kayo, mabuti papahabain niyo. Kasi doon sa city na yon yung mga prostitute may ikse buhok. Dito ba sa atin, may ikse buhok? Tingnan niyo nga mga katabi niyo. Sa palagay niyo, yun ang trabaho niya. Dahil ang may ikse buhok niya. Hindi ba? Eh lalo na kung walang buhok. O, oh, ano na ngayon, tawag niyo doon. Kasi may context. Hindi ka pwedeng apply ng apply ng mga law everywhere, every time. Unawain mo kung ba't binigay yun. May kahulugan. So apply in context. Hindi nyo naman itatapon yung mga lahat ng mga laws, ilagay nyo sa cabinet, gamitin nyo tuwing kailangan, pero kung ang application ay hindi kontra sa turo ni Jesus for us to be loving and to be kind. Apply only when kind, uplifting and loving as Jesus' new command. Mga kapatid, kung pinaalis na yung espirito, huwag nyo nang tanggapin pag bumabalik. Do not be compelled to apply the old law if the method or the result will be unloving, hurtful, murderous. Kaya huwag nang mambabato. What does not pass through the Jesus filter should be treated as meaningless like Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13. Sabi niya, even if I speak in tongues and of angels, if I have not love, I am nothing. If I give away my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Ibig niyo sabihin, pag hindi loving ang ginagawa mo, baliwala yan, huwag ka na magpagod. Sayang lang ang pagod mo. Lalo na kung hindi lang siya unloving, kundi hateful pa pala and hurting. Without the Jesus filter, the law, religiosity, could so easily turn into Moses-ness and Pharisee-ness. Pag hindi mo yan sinala kay Jesus, magiging Pharisee ka, magiging Moses ka, bato ka ng bato. Without the Jesus filter, the law and religiosity could be a burden instead of relief. And verses could harden people's hearts. Marami mga tao nagiging unkind sa kapwa mana ng palataya dahil may hawak na verse. Aba, sabi, open rebuke is better than secret love. Sabi, o oh, sige, open rebuke, pero meron ka ba talagang secret love? O open rebuke lang ang meron ka? Ang galing-galing mo mag-open rebuke, pero meron ka ba talagang secret love? Buksan nga natin at i-extra yung puso mo. Kung talaga may secret love dyan, o ang hilig mo lang talaga sa open review. May mga magulang na nagtatakwil ng anak. May mga magkakapatid na naghihiwa-hiwalay dahil sa verses. At may mga kristyanong nagbabangay-bangayan dahil sa verses. Lahat may hawak na verse na nagpapatuhin na yan na siya ang tama. Baptism should be lubog. Yung kabila, baptism can be we seek. Yung iba, baptism can be buhos. At yung iba, well, pwede naman baptism to be injected. May verse din ako dyan. So, nag-aaway-aaway. Because verses could harden people's hearts. Verses could make people unkind, even cruel. Kaya nga mambabato eh. Verses could easily be used as stones to hurt and kill people. Kaya dapat padaanin sa Jesus filter. Being chosen to be Jesus' earthly mother, being Mother Mary is sublime blessing. But Luke 11, 28 says that there is yet an even greater blessing and that is hearing and obeying God's message and very specially God's messenger, Jesus. The illustration could be applied to religious metamorphosis. The strong man represents the old faith system. If displaced, it could return with a vengeance if the house and the mind is not filled with a good occupant, is not occupied and protected by the stronger man, Jesus, and is not filled with the teachings of Jesus. If religious reorientation, meaning the born-again experience, the subscription to the Bible, new church membership, is not based on Jesus, not lorded over by Jesus, it would only lead to legalistic Phariseeness and Moses-ness. The born-again person could only be worse off than before. Dumami lang lalo ang dalahin, dumami ang sukat ikagilty, dumami ang amo. At madalas mangyari ito. Pag nangyari ito sa isang sumunod sa Bible, sumunod kay Jesus, at naging born-again, pero hindi niya sinala kay Jesus, lalo siyang nasasakal later. At dahil lalo siyang nasasakal, lalo siyang mananakal. Gantihan lang. 
Matthew 23:15. Kaya galit na galit si Jesus niya sa mga Pharisee na yan eh. Mga religious leaders na yan. You Pharisees and teachers of the law of Moses are in for trouble. You are nothing but show-offs. You travel over land and sea to win one follower. And when you have done so, you make that person twice as fit for hell as you are. Sa inyo, may araw din kayo, ha, mga Pharisees. Lagot kayo, mga teachers of the law of Moses. Kung ano-anong pagsisikap at pagpupunyagin nyo na makakonvert, tapos pag may nakonvert kayo, mas dinadala nyo sa malalim na impyerno, mas dinodoblin nyo pa ang kanila mga pagdurusa, as magiging mas bagay sila sa napakamala impyerno ng pamumuhay, sa dami ng inyong mga ipinapataw, na requirement sa kanila na wala namang makakapasa ni kayo ang end lang lagi guilt mabuti pa hindi nyo na kinonvert mas tahimik ang buhay nyo nun kaysa nung dinapuan ninyo nangyayari ito nangyayari sa mga religious converts at mga religious recruits minsan yung ang bait-bait mong pinsan nung mapasama sa ganong relihiyon aba ni ayaw nang sumama sa mga family gatherings ayaw nang makiisa sa mga pangyayari sa mga kapit bahay lahat na masama, lahat evil. Yung church na lang niya, ang tama. Nangyayari yan. At Jesus warned us already. So, you know, pag may na-convert kayo, you make them more fitted for hell than before. Dahil mas nagiging mala impyerno ang kanilang ugali at nalalagay sila sa buhay na mamisto lang impyerno kasi lagi nilang kulang, lagi nilang mali, lagi nilang pinapagalitan, lagi pinaparusahan, lagi natatakot. Mas guilty. Kaya nag, mas nagpapagilty din sa iba. Mas takot, kaya mas nananakot. Mas napagmamalupitan, kaya mas lalong nagmamalupit sa iba. Mas pagod, kaya mas pumapagod din sa kapwa. Mas nagtatago. Pagka napasali ka sa mga Pharisaic churches, talaga magiging hipokrit ka kasi itatago mo ang lahat ng katotohanan. Kasi pag nalaman nila ang totoo sa'yo, pag pipiestahan ka, ititiwalag ka, so nagtatago ka lang. Kaya ayaw na ayaw na Jesus niyang hipokrisi. Mas nagtatago, at dahil ganon, mas namimilit na ang iba magtago rin. It becomes the name of the game. Hide your true self. Be hypocritical. Do not admit your reality because you will never be good enough. Mas nauusig at dahil yan, mas nauusig. Madalas kanya na nagiging ugali na nagiging religyoso. Kasi sumusunod sa Moses-ness, hindi sa Jesus-ness. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, napasama pa, lumala pa. Nagpaalis ka pa daw ng isang spirit, bumalik pito, so walo na sila. Matthew 23, 1-4 Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples The Pharisees and the teachers of the law are experts in the law of Moses but don't do as they do After all, they say one thing and do something else they pile heavy burdens on people's shoulders and won't lift a finger to help. Sabi, ang dami-dami nila ipinapataw na pabigat sa mga tao. Sa offering na lang, ang dami talaga. Iba pa yung first fruit, yung second fruit, third fruit, fifth, sixth, seventh, hundred, twelfth fruit, buwan-buwan may fruit. Iba pa yung offering, iba pa yung construction offering, iba pa yung Sunday school offering, iba pa yung ganitong offering, yung ganyang offering, walang katapos ng offering. Sobrang panghuhut-hut sa mga tao ang reliyon. Pagkatapos lahat, bawal. Ang daming bawal. Hindi ka na magiging good enough kahit kailan. Lagi kang pinapagalitan. Pag nagkamali ang iyong anak, itakwil mo dahil ano na lang sasabihin ng church. Consentidora ka. Inaka ha, magpakaina ka muna bago ka magpakadyakonisa. Pastor, yung anak ko po, madalaga, naging buntis. Gusto ko pong itakwil kasi ano po sasabihin ng church? Eh, ikaw ang ina eh. Ikaw ang tubang kilig sa anak mo. At sa lagay, magtatakwil ka lang anak para lang good looking ang beauty mo sa church. Kahit tatlong taong ka magpa-beauty dyan, isang beses ka lang magkamali, tatadya ka rin nila. Pag, Pagka-pariseik, pag-moseik ang church. Family is family. Magpakaina ka. Hindi yung magtatakwil ka ng anak dahil lamang para good looking ka sa church. The church is a hospital. We are all assumed to be sick, needy of God. 
The church is not a display window for perfect people. Dapat doon kung lumagay sa mga bintana na rostans, nandun ang magagandang produkto. But sa church, hospital, pasyente ka. And we're all patients. Hindi mo dapat ikahiya na may sakit ka, kaya ka nga nasa hospital eh. Kaya ka nga nasa Diyos dahil kulang ka, gusto mong mapuno. Kaya ka nga nasa church para patawarin ka ng Diyos at punuin ka ng Diyos at magpatawaran ng isa't isa't magtulungan. Pero kung itatago mo ang mga kahinaan mo sa isa't isa, at magpe-pretend ka lang that you're okay para ka maging acceptable, huwag ka nalang sumali sa church. Baligtad ang tingin ng mga tao sa paglabit kay Jesus. Kawawa ang alisan ng strong man, ng law, tapos hindi sumilong sa stronger man, sa love. Pagbalik ng law, mas malakas magpahirap. Mosaic and Pharisaic Christianity puts heavy burdens on people's shoulders. Noon hanggang ngayon, Ayaw yan ni Jesus. The Jewish-oriented Christians during the New Testament times also had these issues. Yung mga makahudyo, makamoses, makalo, makafarisi na naging Christian, gusto nila yung mga Gentiles na hindi naman naging Jew. Pag naging Christian, ay magpaka-Jew muna. Paging Jew din. Pinagtatalo-talo na nila na ipapataw nila lahat ang laws of Moses sa mga Gentile na naging Christian. Kasi para sa kanila, naging Christian ka pero tuloy ang pagiging Jewish mo. Acts 15, 5-10 But some Pharisees had become followers of the Lord. Naku ha, Pharisees, tuwan tuwa ka. Wow, may Pharisee naging Christian. Ah, natutuwa ka talaga. Dadali niya ng pagka-Pharisee yun niya. Some Pharisees had become followers of the Lord. They stood up and said, Gentiles who have faith in the Lord must be circumcised and told to obey the law of Moses. Yung mga Jewish men are circumcised. Gentiles are not. Ngayon, na-convert ka, 50 anyos ka na, tutuliin ka pa nila. Mabigat-bigat na surgery yan. Sabi niya, Gentiles should be circumcised and told to obey the law of Moses. And the law of Moses, 10 commandments plus 613 other commandments called misbots. So sa mga yung dala-dala nating hindi natin napasan, ipapataw din natin sa mga Gentile, pasensya sila, naging Christian sila, dapat maging Jewish din sila. The apostles and church leaders met to discuss this problem about Gentiles. They had talked it over for a long time and I must, I'm sure it helps us an acrimonious debate. When Peter got up and said, Now why are you trying to make God angry? by placing a heavy burden on these followers. This burden was too heavy for us or our ancestors. But yung ginagalit ang Diyos? Ba't yung papatawan ng napakabigat na dalahin ang mga taong ito na hindi naman sila hudyo? Tayo nga mga hudyo, tayo at ating mga ninuno, di naman natin talaga natupad dyan. Aminin natin. Tapos ipipilit natin sa kanila rin. Everybody forgets that the Mosaic Law was for the Israelites who were taken out of Egypt. Sabi ni Lord, I am the God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and because of that, ginawa ko yan para sa inyo, may gagawin din kayo para sa akin, may covenant tayo, may usapan tayo. The Gentiles were not part of that deal. Bakit? Israelite ba sila na pinalabas sa Egypt? Ba't sila sinasangkot sa napakarami mga laws na ito na usapan lang para sa mga Israelita na sinagip from slavery? Jewism was only for the Jews. That's why the Jews never even converted other people. Kanila lang yung religion nila. But Jesusness is for all. It's for the Jew. It's for the Gentile. Sabi ni Jesus, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Si Jesus ang nag-extend ng Christianity to everybody, but He did not extend Jewishism for everybody. He extended Jesusness. So hindi ka naman naging Jew. Ngayon, magpapaka-Jew ka pa. E di yung mga law na hindi naman ikaw ang kausap at ipinataw sa'yo. Voluntarily, ipapataw mo sa iyong sarili para ka mahirapan. Anong klaseng pahirap yun sa sarili? Christians could be so confused as who to follow, as what and whose commands to obey. Even in the first century Christianity, buhay pa lahat yung mga apostle, nagkakagulo na sila. 1 Corinthians 1.12 One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas or Peter. Still another, I follow Christ. Nakita nyo? Iba-iba sila may tinagsusundan. 
Ibig sabihin, may iba-ibang turo yung si Paul, si Apollos, si Peter, na sapat na para magkaroon ng hidwaan yung mga humahanga sa kanila. May mga peculiar teaching sila, unique to themselves and to their flocks, to the point that all the other Christians who share Jesus do not always share Paul or Apollos or Cephas. Noon pa man, may kanya-kanya silang katuroan na nag sa mga followers. Kaya si Paul, si Apollos, si Cephas, dapat ding salain sa Jesus filter. Obvious na obvious sa 1 Corinthians 1.12. They had peculiar teachings that did not agree with each other. So ang mga Christians din ngayon, hindi agree. Paano ba tayo magbabaptize? Ano bang kakainin natin sa Lord's Supper? Ano bang isusuot natin? Kasi kanya-kanya rin tayo na sinusunod at hinahangaan. Sila mismo, malinaw na malinaw. Si Paul, si Apollos, si Cephas, their followers were divided. Because they were saying, mas tama si Paul, ay mas tama si Apollos, ay mas tama si Cephas. Sabi ba, may mas tatama pa ba kay Christ? And doon tayo agree. So si Kristo ang gawing salaan ng lahat. After all, He is the one who is the image of the invisible God. He was the one who died for our sins and lived again. Siya ang ating Savior. So dapat yung turo niya ang standard for everybody. So add Moses and the teachers of the law, the priests and the Pharisees, sasalaan. So sasalain kahit turo ni Paul, kahit turo ni Apollos, ni Cephas, at turo ni Moses, sa mga teachers of the law, ng mga priests and Pharisees, with the standard of Jesus. Because He is the only one who knows the Father. And He's the only one who is the true image of the invisible God. If the house is not occupied by Jesusness, the stronger man, Moses-ness, Pharisee-ness, Paul-ness, Peter-ness, Apollos-ness, the strong man will return to it and take over the situation. And it will be much worse. May mga katuroan si Moses, ang mga Pharisees, si Paul, si Peter na maka Jesus. Ang dami nilang katuroan ng maka Jesus. Lahat yon lalampas sa salaan ituloy. Pero hindi na sa lalampas. Yung unloving, yung unkind, yung cruel, ilagay na sa shelf. At kung meron talagang dapat mambato, ipasadyos na siya nalang mambato. Ba't ikaw? Sabi niya, ngyabang-ngyabang mo. Ano naman ang karapatan mong tanggalin ng puwing sa kapwa mo? Ikaw nga, laki-laki ng puwing mo. Tignan mo muna sarili mo ha, bago ka manghusga ng iba. Sabi ni Jesus. So bind the strong man with the stronger man. Filter all teachings of all teachers through the Jesus filter. Tanda-tandaan, ano man ang marinig yung sinabi ni sister, ni brother, ni pastor, ni inuman, salain kay Jesus. Pag lumampas, ituloy. Pag hindi, ilagay sa shelf. Because Jesus wants us to have rest, to have peace from all that which is burdensome, cruel, and unkind. And most of that come from the law. Father, teach us to apply this in our lives. Kung paano sasalain ang lahat ng dati naming tinaniwalaan, mga ideyang tinanggap namin nung bata, pa kami na nakasiksik sa utak namin, turuan mo kami pati ang utak namin, pandaan din namin sasalaan para lahat ng mga unjesusness maiwan at ang matira lang yung sangayon sa katuruan ng iyong anak na si Jesus. Doon kami mabuhay, yun ay pamuhay namin, yun ang aming iturot, ishare sa iba para lahat kami pare-parehong tumanggap ng rest, ng peace, ng love. Pagbulag-bulayan mga kapatid, ang personal application nito sa atin-ating mga buhay.